Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy, Happy Wooly Wednesday! Wednesday. <laughs> that was graceful. <laughs> Happy Wooly Wednesday wherever you are. We are Living Felt based in Central Texas. We are also FeltingTutorials.com and if you've stumbled upon our live feed, welcome to the Octa Party. Today we are having an Octa Party celebrating this fantastic fantastic project brought to us by Helen Russell, the artist, the designer of the octopuses and octopodes as she calls them. So many colors to make, such a fun project. She is here with us today so you'll get to know more about her, see more of her artwork as well as her octopodes and just learn a little bit more about the designer of this project. So thank you so much for being here. Listen, if you are here, everything's happening over in the live chat. Be sure to say hi and where you're from. And also, if you have made your own octopus from Helen's, from Helen's project, please let us hear from you in the feed because we are going to draw names for prizes during today's show. Thank you everyone for being here. Uh, to help kick us off, let's start by saying hi to some folks. Let me see who's here. I have seen some of you check in. There's Jan Scott from Ottawa. Always nice to have you here. Diane Bubbles, Nicola Moore from the UK. Marisol, we don't know where you are, but thank you for coming. Joan in Tennessee. Uh, we have Trisha in Scotland. Wow, that's fantastic. Donna in California. Um, Bonnie Roberts is here. Susan Morris, Donna Munninger. Thank you all for being here. Happy Wednesday wherever you are. So say hi and where you're from. And to help kick us off today, we have our very funny fairy in the field, Fairy Kayla. Hello, fabulous felting friends. I hope you are having a great day and a very happy Willy Wednesday. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us today, everybody. We have a super awesome, super fun show planned today, so I don't want to hold you up any longer, even though I know you all show up for the jokes. <laughs> so without further ado, what do you call octopus twins? What do you call octopus twins? Well, I guess they would be identical twins. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. Have fun today, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> Thanks, Kayla, and thanks, everyone, for putting up with a little bit of corniness. Kayla is the queen of puns around here. We've made it her official job. <laughs> Thank you all for joining in. Listen, today's show is an octoparty. As I mentioned, we are here today with Helen Russell, all the way from Staten Island, New York. She shared this project with us. So everyone, please give a big BFF welcome to Helen. Helen, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's very nice to be here. I see that you are wearing your octopus as well. <laughs> I'm going to try and keep mine on throughout the, it probably won't stay on throughout the duration yeah, of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, this is Helen. Um, Helen designed this project and shared it in our group, Living Felt Friends. Jordan was queuing up some BFF show and tells like we always share and I saw this project and did virtual backflips. If I could have done backflips, I would have done backflips, but I did spiritual backflips when I saw your octopuses, octopodes, Helen. Tell us how you came up with the name octopodes because I have to force myself to say that one. Because it is, everybody stumbles and they want to say octopi, and they don't know if that's right, or if they say octopuses, that sounds strange. So I looked up alternatives, and there's a whole discussion about it on my octopus appreciation Facebook group, and people say, because it's a Greek word, it's octopodes. Okay, so I'll go with that. <laughs> All right, <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go with octopodes. Fantastic. Now... Helen, you shared that this project came to you when you did one of our Wooly Wednesday projects. Yeah, I did um, the little heart dangler. I love and that. I love the beachy theme you got going on yeah, there. The beach is my favorite place to be. So when I did this, had that in mind, got my little fish uh, beads, things like that. 
And I saw this at eye level in my living room when it was hanging. And I said, boy, that looks like an octopus arm. So I made, oops, now that one left. <laughs> I made this one. He's very really similar fun. technique to this in the same colors. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, they're joined. <laughs> and this one I did without a resist. Right. And he's a little awkward looking, but he's got great texture. Yeah, he's and, fantastic. Uh, <laughs> so I decided to make it with a, you did the vessel, I think the very next week. Oh. So I said, wait, the vessel would go perfectly for the top of the octopus. That's right. Yeah, I love how you've combined two very simple things, making a cord, a type of cordage, and you have a way um, where you made it a little bigger at the top and tapered at the bottom, and we'll share that in a minute, and then joined it with a vessel. That's exactly it. It's a very simple project. So for those of you who haven't made one yet, Helen has really come up with, I think like, I don't know, maybe it's like a level two wet felting project. So maybe you've made a basic piece of felt, even flat. You've learned how to handle fine fibers, in this case, merino top and some embellishment fibers. Uh, and then maybe you've wet felted over a resist. But even if you haven't, they could give it a go, don't you think, Helen? Definitely. It's very forgiving because mm -hmm. the odd texture and the strange shape is what octopuses are all about. They they change their shape constantly and they're, they change their texture constantly at will. It's they change <laughs> the color also? Their color and their texture, yeah. It's weird. <laughs> don't their colors change when they dream? That's what the theory is. I just posted <laughs> that in my Facebook too, on my, you on did? my page, that, that Nova, or I think it was a Nova documentary that that filmed an octopus dreaming, yeah. And she was we, changing colors. Yeah, we were talking wow. about that with someone. He was here, and we were sharing your <laughs> octopodes with them. And I don't even remember who was here. But anyway, we were all excited about it. Really, really fun. Helen, I'd like to um, show maybe some of your other art so that people can get an idea of you as an artist. And then, Jordan, why don't you cue those up for us? Sure. Tell you tell us a little bit about this piece, Helen. This was obviously, you know, uh, Monet inspired with the little, you know, greenish bridge and the water lilies. Um, I also like to watch painting tutorials when I'm eating my lunch, things like that. And there was a, a painting a painting tutorial on YouTube, a free one that was doing something like this, and I said, I bet I could follow that painting tutorial and help. And that's sort of how this came about. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's really beautiful. The water just looks like a mirror. Fantastic. Yeah, that one was also um, another uh, tutorial that uh, really got me to understand darks and lights in water, that's for sure. Very pretty. I love all the colors in that. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> This one was inspired because I, I won a Wooly Wednesday and I got the Maori cool tones. And I said, let's see if I can put them all into one piece. <laughs> <laughs> really fun. And then another idea that followed that one. Yeah. I love the shading in that. And this is one of my favorite of your pieces. Yeah, that's an early one that uh, just the tie dye felt behind it inspired me because it looked like water to me. Mm -hmm. And I would, I would love to have a white one. <laughs> In that one, uh, I, I see all the flower displays at work and uh, just wanted to do some more floral ideas and the, be the beads too. I wanted to incorporate the little bee beads so fun now so you were sharing that you work at michael's in the framing department mm -hmm. so do you get to see a lot yeah. of art come across your desk that i do that's that's one of the reasons i wanted to do that i wanted to be able to interact with other artists and uh, and it i do it's really fun get to talk mm -hmm. to them and and talk about what they're doing and it's it's interesting 
That's fantastic. Now, I think we have a couple of collages here, don't we, Jordan? Let's cut to some collages. And Helen, this is a quite a fun variety. Some of the pieces we just saw. Mm -hmm. And all of these are felt to some degree. Oh, they're all felt, yeah. Felt, needle felt. Needle felt or, yeah, 3D, 2D. Mm -hmm. And we see that you have a variety of projects. Some are quite original, and some are either from Wooly Wednesday projects or even from the school, feltingtutorials.com. So tell us a little bit about mm -hmm. that. So I, I really enjoy uh, tutorials because I feel like they're a starting off point and mm -hmm. I can always learn from someone else. Someone's doing something differently the way, than the way I do it. Mm -hmm. So I made a deal with myself to, every time that I make take a tutorial, I make my own project based on the skills I've learned from that tutorial. And this way I don't feel like I don't do anything original. Right, I think that's so fantastic. And you shared with us a project earlier um, that was a project completely different from a tutorial you took in the school. Do you yeah. have that handy? Yeah, I do. So this okay, one I so just finished yesterday. Just and yesterday? Yes. A little more in front of you. There you go. Fantastic. Highland cow. Yes. Great perspective. <laughs> I can show you the original photo and I give Fran Kennedy, she's the photographer, I asked her for her permission to use this. Which is and key. I love, oh, I love fantastic. Water yeah. Yeah, I definitely. That's so fun. So y'all don't copy it. Too. She had permission from, <laughs> from her friend, a photographer. But tell us, what was the class you took that led you to this? I took Sonia's um, macaw class, Sonia Weeks as well. Mm -hmm. And um, she had a technique of using the short fiber bat on the back as the base. And that mm -hmm. is what I did because I didn't want any other colors coming through other than what I wanted on the front. And that was, right. that was my driving idea to get that really rich dark sky and uh, not have other darks come where I didn't want them. Right. Fantastic. Yeah. And a completely different class. The macaws, greens and leaves and mm -hmm. a red or a blue bird. But sometimes one technique after another after another really starts to build your own internal library of tools to pull exactly. from. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's really fun. And I like the deal that you made with yourself as, so, as well. <laughs> so tell us, um, would you tell us a little bit about how your artistic journey was influenced or started and maybe how that led you to felting as well? Um, my parents were both artists, as well as my sister. And um, my brother is a musician. So mm -hmm. we're all very creative people. And uh, we had unlimited supplies. My, my father was an art teacher, a high school okay. art teacher. So nice. we had unlimited supplies in the house. I really thought that pencils were free. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you just got, I got these Board of Ed pencils that I thought everyone had a house full of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. And, uh, unlimited crayon. So that's how I grew up with uh, constantly doing art projects. And my mother did a lot of sewing, a lot of doll making, and uh, she would have loved felting. Mm -hmm. And um, she's, she's no longer with us, but um, she, a lot of my projects, I think, reflect her style, her taste. And um, I can see, even in my drawings, I see her drawings. You were influenced by her. Oh, a great deal. <laughs> That's beautiful. And so how did you come to felting? So I uh, focused on photography for most of my uh, life up to a few years ago. And uh, when the pandemic came around was about the time I was tired of being a photographer anyway. So it didn't really 
make a big impact in my career because I was already coming out of that and I didn't know where I wanted to go, but I said, let me start painting again, let me start drawing again. And then I saw on Facebook, needle felting, and uh, the people that were doing it, I asked, where do you get your supplies? And they pointed me to you. No. So <laughs> that's where that started. That's really sweet. And what was the first project you started with? My very first project. And she has it. That's was, I have it. Oh. And I have oh. it. It's the box. And I think he came out so good that I had him hanging in my dining room for forever. For oh. at least a year. Yeah. That warms my heart so much. <laughs> so fun. And you have such a so it was a real uh, um, confidence booster that it came out so well for my first project. That's so nice. So glad to hear that. Yeah, and we're so glad to then here you are now. I mean, obviously you're a very skilled artist. You you have a lot of understanding about light and shadow perspective. Like you can really convey that in your art. And so then you discovered a new medium that you can play within, share within. And how long have you been felting now? Uh, I think that was 2020. Yeah, that, okay. was, the, that was July Recent. of 2020. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very recent. And so your other mediums are, do you work in acrylics or oil? What kind of paint do you use? Acrylic and watercolor mm -hmm. and, uh, and pencil and marker and gel pen. Right. And <laughs> <Color>. <laughs> she likes Kevin. <laughs> Um, Helen, a couple of people are asking about the potential of wire in the tentacles, and you and I were discussing this just a little bit before the show. So what is your thoughts on putting wire in the tentacles? Somebody said, who was it, Jan Scott, said it would make them clingier, like maybe they would hold on to something, and Nicola Moore asked, is there a way to put a wire in there? So what are your thoughts about wiring up your octopodes? A few... Um, maybe a month ago or so, maybe I posted on Facebook that I was thinking about putting a wire in and some people warned me oh against rust or wet oh. felting with a wire and I said hmm maybe I don't want to risk that so I didn't but now I'm trying it I actually started one and uh, I'll let you know how it goes but then um, somebody chimed in and said that they they do wet felt with wire and there's no problem so yeah that's great <laughs> i think it was joyce with the dragon yes, yeah because yes, yes. she wires her dragon wings and mm -hmm. i've put wire in snakes and purse handles things like that and i think yeah i don't know i don't know if it'll rust but it slippies around a little bit at least in my experience it kind of you know gets a little bit longer but it just depends so yeah, I think people, and anyway, people could wire just a couple. They didn't have to wire all of them, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah, fun. Meredith Maloney has a question for you, and she said she'd love to know about your interest in bats. Oh, yes, I am a little obsessed with bats. And I did bring my very first 3D project was a bat. Oh. And not the most successful little guy. I love his feet. His feet came out great. He's but adorable. his wings are uh, a little asymmetrical and a little clunky, <laughs> and his face is a little goofy. But I kept him anyway because he's my first. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as well you should for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you develop a love for bats? Oh, and what do you call this guy? He's Cthulhu. He's a uh, legendary um, H.P. Uh, Lovecraft character. And a friend of mine who is also a big fan of Lovecraft uh, asked me to do that for her. Really that beautiful. That was a special request. <laughs> really beautiful. Um, so D Brown wants to, so D Brown says that she wants a kit but can't decide what color. We do have kits uh, inspired by Helen's octopodes, which are fantastic. I have some of the kit innards here but maybe Jordan will throw us up some imagery okay so here's the this is the Zen garden 
and this is the Paradise Island. Uh, just as an example, for this kit, you get like all this stuff. So you're going to get wool, and you're going to get a merino silk blend and or one of our decadence blends. And then you're going to get naps and viscose, something shiny anyway, and something textural as well, like the sari silk waste, all of those to make these. And you can always add. So if you like this copper color and you want this hanky, like this was made by Helen, um, you could add a copper hanky. So you can add colors in the same color family, but a different texture just to add to it. So that gives you an idea. But Jordan's going to throw up some imagery here for you to look at. And I'd love to hear in the chat, what are some colors that you've made or colors you would like to make your octopus in? Because these are really fun colors. Pink, like I never would have made a pink octopus. <laughs> when they showed up, one of our staff members quickly proclaimed that was her favorite. <laughs> so fun. And this is me, Zen Garden. I like the gray and the black together and the weird green. That's just one of the things I like. So Dee, we'd love to hear, you know, what are you thinking that you'd like to make your octopus in? And hey, you know, just make your first one in a color because Hel I asked Helen after making 15 some odd octopodes, what are your epiphanies? What have you realized? I think the more you make, the easier they are to make, which I, is probably true for most projects. But this is such a fast project that, you know, you can make it in one morning, you know, and finish it the next day after it's dry. Because it really only takes three hours tops to do the, the arms and the body and get it all set up to dry and then the next day you do the eyes you know right it's, and stuff Finish it's not it's not a long project yeah right it's not a long project i think this is great for beginners i think it'd be a blast for kids or like a mom and kids project so maybe Definitely. the kids are just learning and they can make the tentacles and mom can help with the body and the bringing them all together and those are just such <laughs> fun colors helen so great um in fact we have some bff octopodes that y'all have made from helen's kit or helen's sharing of the project so let's look at some of those very dramatic wendy just a beautiful piece and well photographed don't you think mm -hmm. looks really good I nice love this one. <laughs> nice job on the bow tie. <laughs> Very cute. So darling. And the Angelina and the tentacles. Guaranteed sparkly hair. <laughs> 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 so cute. Faye. I love it. Faye me too. Oh, fantastic. Very cutely photographed too. I love these guys in their natural environment. So sweet. <laughs> a little bit different. I think this was a, how do I make an octopus from scraps, which is fantastic. Just bringing all these colors together. So fun. And this one became a purse. Very clever. Using what she learned probably from your techniques, Helen, and turn it into something completely else. So fun. <laughs> Very sweet. That's a pretty purple, isn't it? It's like a Lakers octopus. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. We love seeing what y'all make. The octopus kits have been really popular. All you have to do is click a button to choose whichever color you want. Are you making any more octopodes, Helen? Yeah, I actually have somebody deciding what colors they want. There's uh, two in the request bin at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. I have made now, a few more that, that I, as soon as I made them, I had to send them out. Oh, that's so, so nice. Now, them. do you sell through your Facebook page, or how do you sell your artwork? Uh, actually, on my Instagram, people have been just contacting me via message, and mm -hmm. uh, it's been going that way so far. I might open an Etsy. We'll see. We'll see. So let's throw up her <laughs> tag. We don't know what it is, Helen. 
what's your well i actually just changed my instagram to hr thousand stuff instead of hr <laughs> photo stuff hr <laughs> felton stuff so is it f-e-l-t-n <laughs> stuff Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. HR Felton stuff. Very cute. So y'all check that out. We'll throw it up in the description down below so that you can follow Helen. Please do. And um, yeah, because on your regular website, there's a tons of art, different mediums, lots of photography, very inspiring, mm -hmm. all of it for sure. Okay, so Devin says that she wants to make one as a Christmas tree topper. <laughs> I love that. That sounds great. <laughs> We have some names in the hat here. George's been writing down names, and we are going to give away an octopus kit right now. Uh, so you'll get to choose your colors. I, I'm going to close my eyes and pretend that my hand is Helen's hand. And Helen, you, Helen, you can draw the name, okay? <laughs> Y'all all can read it. Okay, I won't even look. There it is. Laura Buckles. Laura Buckles. <laughs> Congratulations, Laura. You have won an octopus kit. This fun project designed by Helen Russell, our guest today. And you can pick any color way you want. So go to the contact us page and let us know what your choice is. And the fairies will get it sent out to you. So congratulations. So fun. OK, what else do we want to share, Jordan? We have some more BFF octopuses. Okay. Not not specifically made after Helen's, but just to have fun with the octopus. It's, it's an octopus party. <laughs> yeah. So bring your octopodes, and Jordan's got some more to share. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. It's fantastic. Wow. So cool. Here's a little needle felted guy with some kind of suckers attached. Huh? Clay or something? Very yeah, clever. Or beads or something. I can't read the name, so y'all read them. Christensen King. Oh, I can move this. So cute. I love how it's sort of in its setting there. This one's made by Fairy Kayla. Fairy Kayla, yay! <laughs> Fantastic needle felted octopus. All those tentacles, that took time. All the suckers. Joanne Stratakos, the maker of the Living Felt BFF mug. Very fantastic. Beautiful piece. Oh, that's fun. Linda. <laughs> blue on blue. It works. Totally, yeah. Oh, wow. This rainbow guy is amazing. <laughs> <sighs> so it looks like she made little Milfior and cut it, right? Milfiori, cut it, mm, yeah. little canes, and then cut it. Oh, that's so And cool. use those for tentacles. Wow. Yeah, really fun. Whoa, those are fun colors together. I love the eyes. <laughs> Oh yeah, and the the suckers are like little beads. Anyone who sews in all those little beads has a patience oh. on a level that I know not. <laughs> Audrey really likes octopuses. She's made them multiple times. Wow. So cool. Very cool, Audrey. Those are beautiful. And now, yeah, I saw this one somewhere. It's just amazing. It's gotta be huge. Yeah. Oh, that's dramatic. Coming out of the frame, very nice. Combination of 2D, 3D, very yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. And the fish are like something else. They're metal, I think. They look shiny. Yeah. Yeah. A beautiful Kimberly pulley one. That's right. I remember this piece. Really beautiful. Pamela Lee. Oh, yeah, this one as well. Just incredible. I don't even know what all the mediums are going on in there. Do you know what the suckers are made of? I don't. <laughs> really beautiful piece. Incredible. And here's one by Sonia. <laughs> Dapper <Little Deborah>. hat. <laughs> Very fun. This one was made for newborn <laughs> photography. Yeah, Daniela Aubrey does newborn photography props, and she's a photographer. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> oh, little air plant holders. That's so clever. Very cute. Very nice. Oh, thank you all for sharing your octopodes <laughs> in their great variety. Really a lot of fun. And I'm sure it's going to inspire some people to try something different. Don't you think, Helen? 
uh, I'm inspired to do something out of those, that's for sure. <laughs> so fun. Well, listen, we would like to give away another kit. I know there's lots of people chiming in. Thank you everyone for chiming in the chat. If you don't win, remember to comment down below because we always draw prizes from previous shows and you can win in the next show just from commenting after this show down below. Our next winner is Susan Cunningham, another Yay. talented felter, does a lot of 2D. Congratulations, Susan. You have won an octopus felting kit, so choose your colorway. Get it on there. Choose your colorway and let us know what you would like. So fun. Okay, what do you want to talk about, Jordan? Just anything about the octopodes. <laughs> We're here, you know. I want to tell you, this is a fun project. So I feel very honored, Helen. Thank you for letting us share your tutorial, teaching me how to do it through your instruction. I asked Helen before we met, what was her favorite octopus? And we give you, how do you call it? Pig octopus. Pig octopus, yeah. Okay, so. Tell us about Peacock Octopus and uh, Jordan, throw up the very pretty image you have there. <laughs> Peacock Octopus. That's the, that's the properly photographed one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like morphing different animals. And uh, I love peacocks. They're really hard to draw. They're really hard to paint. I'm trying. But I said, let me make one uh, with an octopus. And I think it worked out pretty well. Oh, yes. You definitely did it just to Okay, so you like octopuses, bats, and peacocks. And hummingbirds. What else? And what? And hummingbirds. And, and hummingbirds. Okay, <laughs> these, are, these are your big critter crushes. Oh, mm. I love it. Well, it's so fun. This is a fantastic summer project. I know our BFFs have been sharing tons of things in our Facebook group. I think Jordan's going to run us through some quick. Did you have some other photos, Jordan? Sure. Uh, just I some summer fun kind of ones. Jordan's going to click us through some quick BFF makes that y'all have shared. We love seeing them. Oh, I'm seeing the Pledge of Allegiance now. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. We just had the fourth. So everyone gets really patriotic. <laughs> oh, that's a fun view. Very nice, and you see the original picture. So sweet. Uh, that's a happy guy right there. <laughs> <laughs> Something about this one is just so special. Oh yeah, yeah, I really love the sh sheen on that beach ball especially, mm -hmm. so good. <laughs> Lots of fun beach scapes, it's beautiful. Oh, those are pretty fish. I like the perspective. Some mer gnomes. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cute. <gasps> Got an aqua vessel. Oh, yeah. So if you want to make that vessel, take Don's woodsy vessel class to get the techniques mm -hmm, in the school. Oh, that's pretty. Up. That's it feels like you're underwater. Mm -hmm. I, I love that one. Mm -hmm. Really great perspective oh sweet and this is a wet felted starfish over a resist wow yeah <laughs> sizable too yeah oh in the wave right in the curl you might say very nice <laughs> memory bradley and then this really pretty one by ingrid bagley who <laughs> says this is still a work in progress so much texture <laughs> going on in there. And I think you really need to if you're going to do a coral reef underneath. You got to have texture and variety. So fun. And then we have a few of our uh, fairy boxes. Oh. Some pictures from those. So this we have May. blend boxes that are a subscription box. Um, they vary each month. It's mostly fine fibers and then other fun tchotchkes and sometimes things we don't even carry in the shop like last month. Everyone got a CD from my husband, Rodney Jean. Um, so really fun. And right now the next box that people will be buying is September. We haven't even put up the inspiration image yet, but there's a different box every month. Hint, September fall. <laughs> <laughs> 
hint. <laughs> anyway, the subscription boxes are available. Like I said, they're mostly fine fibers. And what we do is we gather a collection of images that represent the colors you'll get. So you basically have to buy a mystery box based on the color theme. And then it's a surprise inside. So you only get to see what's in a box after people have received them really fun and you can buy one-offs or you can buy the subscription so thanks for sharing those jordan super mm -hmm. fun well i've had really fun with the octopode party octopode party octoparty <laughs> octoparty <laughs> we look forward to seeing more of your octopuses and you got to follow helen at helen i didn't write it down h r felton stuff on instagram and if you make an octopus Please share it in our group, Living Felt Friends on Facebook. We want to see them. Uh, share them with Helen as well. You can follow her on Facebook as well. And we're going to be back next week, aren't we, Jordan? Not as a live. No. Are we Just back? Just a regular. Mm -hmm. Regular show. Kimberly. Okay, right. So next week show is not live but there will be a woolly wednesday there's going to be some weeks where there's no show next week is a woolly wednesday my guest is kimberly czar she was in the studio filming a new tutorial i'm not going to tell you what it is today but you might have a hint next week if you watch and we are going to really help you with the importance and value of getting a firm needle felt so we'll work together on that one and y'all come back next week please leave your comments down below and a little love for helen russell of hr felton stuff down below so that she can read all of your lovely bff comments after the show today helen thank you for joining us thank you and thanks for sharing your project a lot of people oh, are having you. fun because you share this so freely and we're super grateful great I'm so happy. Cool, cool. All right, you guys. Have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you in the group. Till next time. Bye.